So I'm going to talk about um, what FM can do for you, and this is very much from the from the client um, side. And to start with, I'm going to give you a bit of background into NHS Property Services Limited, what we do, um, where we've um, where we're going, and that'll put into context some of the case studies that I'm going to talk through with you. And so NHS Property Services, we are responsible for three and a half thousand properties in the NHS estate. So this is GP <laughs> surgeries, community hospitals. Um, etc. The company came together, was formed three years ago. Um, we work directly to the to the um, Department of Health. We're not formally part of the um, NHS. The reason for that is the Department of Health wanted to set up a new company, staffed by the best people they could get to run the NHS estate as professionally as it could be. They were uh, wanted a clear division between the people who are running the clinical services and the people who are running the, the property. So we came together three years ago and we came together from um, 160 individual local NHS estates departments, all with their own ways of working, all with their own priorities. So we've been on a significant journey during that time. Um, as I said, we've got a clear mandate from the um, government to improve the utilisation of the estate, minimise the cost of running the organisation, of running the um, our properties, and importantly, we're passing our savings back to the patient ultimately. So that's that's where we are now. When we first started, facilities management wasn't seen as a core element of the business, despite the fact we've got three and a half thousand people. Um, across the um, across the portfolio, the traditional view, and I know most of you would recognise it, the traditional view of facilities management is: if you're doing a good job, you're not seen. It's a support function. It's very much a commodity. The best thing you can do is get the services in as cheap as you possibly can. It's transactional, short-term contracts. It's all behind the scenes, and really, it's all about maintenance and cleaning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What we've been working on is. How can we change that approach where we're working because facilities management is clearly a lot more than that. And I'm going to talk through some case studies with you. So as far as I'm concerned, good, strong facilities management is all about being a strategic planning partner. We've talked about the advantages of um, deploying technology, for example, in energy. If you understand the cost, you can start making proper decisions around your estate and the utilisation of that estate. That informs investment decisions. We talk about successfully controlling and, and minimising cost by taking a proper professional oversight of what's being spent where. It's creating and measuring value. It's not just about cost. cost. Cost is important, but it's the wider value that's important. And if you're running estates and facilities management effectively, you are absolutely keeping up to date with new technologies and ideas. Things do not stand still in facilities management. And what's significantly important is to be good at facilities management, you have to be focused on the customer. A strong customer orientation is what we need and what we're aspiring for throughout all of our people. So I've just put a quote there from the British Institute of Facilities Management. The sector is now large and complex comprising a mix of in-house departments, specialist contractors, large multi-service companies and consortia delivering the full range of design, build, finance and management. Concur with all of that and in our organisation it's for facilities management that's the, at the driving front end. So just want to give you a couple of examples. I don't know how many of you are from Yorkshire, have been to York, but there is a beautiful building there called Bootham, ha Bootham Park. It was built in 1750. It was built in 1750 to take care of the um, mental health patients um, in the community. And the level of care that was um, provided for um, patients, members of the community who, who had um, mental health issues was significantly different in 1750 to how it's managed now. But a beautiful building as with all old buildings, is it fit for purpose for modern healthcare delivery? No, it isn't. Is the community significantly attached to that property? Absolutely, they are. When it came to us, it was, um, it was inspected by the Care Quality Commission, so they're the people who go around to make sure that the, all of the healthcare facilities are fit for purpose and clean, etc. 
and it failed the inspection. Services were had to be moved out urgently. So what did we do within the facilities management arm? Well, we knew about these issues because we had people on the ground and they were, they were reporting the issues. So we worked with our partners to ensure we could get the site as fit for purpose as possible so services could, in the short term, return to site. We worked with partners to evaluate, evaluate the occupancy and the cost of the site, pulling together all the relevant data and information we had. And because of that, the client has asked us to provide strategic services across all of their 31 assets. That was the, the significance of being at the, at, the, in the, at the front foot dealing with the client and pulling together all relevant information. It, I would say it's an absolute brilliant building to visit. And I mentioned earlier about the way um, the services, if you like, have been improved over the years. In Bootham Park Possible, in Bootham Park Hospital, there is a um, there's an area um, in the building that um, is, is underground, and it's where it's still there from seven, from the 1750s. It's where they had the pit for hosing down disruptive members of um, of the hospital. Absolutely diabolical treatment for people who needed proper professional care, but. It's, it's grown and there's a, a huge attachment to the, um, to the building. It's in beautiful ground and it is, a, it is a, um, a constant job to make sure that the maintenance is, um, is, is up to specification. But what's important is the turnaround in terms, of, in terms of the level of maintenance has been driven by facilities management. The next case that I want to talk through with you is South Tees Health Economy. So, South Tees Health Economy wanted to provide more care closer to, to home. That meant that they were, wanted to invest more in the type of estate that, that we've got in NHS property services. So the estate had to be completely recon reconfigured. Again, taking the lead, we were able to model how the centralisation of support services and facilities management services could be used to help cover the cost of redeveloping properties and improving the utilisation of the estate. So the important thing is by working closely with the clinical providers and undertaking um, good practice on FM, there's a saving of £1.9 million that has been reinvested back into the estate. Third one, this is significant, when we um, formed NHS Property Services and the um, 150 plus organisations came together, we had over 2,000 contracts, arrangements in place with suppliers across the country. We've gone, using our scale, we have rationalised all of those arrangements. We've gone from 2,300 to now 20. 20 contracts in place across the whole country. That saved at, at our current run rate over £20 million a year. And we've got strategic partners in place now who are working with us to um, look at further opportunities for savings. So we've got, as I said, we've got 2015-16 savings target of 15 million. The actual at the moment is 22, all going back to patient care. And that is through putting professional arrangements in place and managing the contractual arrangements professionally and making sure we've got partners in place who are working with us to identify further opportunities. So what can FM offer and how can it add value? Well, it can certainly deliver effective management of an organisation's assets. It can certainly enhance the skill of people at all ranges within the um, FM arena. If it's effective, it will enable new working styles and processes, both internally within the FM area, but also with clients, which is vital um, in the way we're working nowadays and it can enhance and project an, entities, an, an organization's identity. It's the FM people who are on the ground delivering services day to day and if they're aligned effectively with the organization's value, it would be seamless. And it can help the integration of processes associated with change, post-merger, acquisition. And for me, more than anything else, it is all about um, it, effective 
FM delivery is all about making sure from a client's perspective you're delivering and supporting their aims and goals um, by having um, aligned processes and performance management of yourself. So that's where we are in um, NHS Property Services. I'm happy to take any questions that people may have.